Well, here we are, folks. Two games left to play at the World Scrabble Championship, a biennial event to determine the best Scrabble player in the world. This match will feature Wellington Jagiri of Nigeria, Adam Logan of Canada. Adam, in a situation he needs to win to keep his chances at the top two spots alive. Wellington, with the win here, would come rather close to clinching a top two spot. Not mathematically, but a win here would be huge for his chances. Can the Canadian keep his shot at a second title alive, or will Wellington nearly cement his place in the top two, trying to win his wor second world championship? We will find out Wellington of Nigeria to play first, and the Z, the first tile he's pulled, along with the K, G, E, O, and two S's. So that'll be the way we begin this one. Once again, Matt Canick on the mic, joined by James Curley. And in this situation, uh, what are you looking to do out of this rack? Uh, probably score points. And the question is to place one of the S's on the end of Zek or not. And it looks like Wellington doesn't want to give up the, uh, you know, the sign that he has two S's. So he keeps both on his rack. And uh, that seems fair enough. I think Zek is a, a very standard move. Hold on to that S. Don't telegraph any information and cash one next turn. So Zek, the way Wellington opens this game, A-A-E-H-O-T-U for Adam Logan to respond. A-H-A looks to be a very good play beneath Zek. Z-A-E-H and K-A out of this rack. E-O-T-U, maybe not the best leave here, but that is so many points. I think you have to make that play. Yeah, I think Aha is the play here. Um, that seems pretty standard. Uh, Adam obviously doesn't like the OU leave, but 32 points is, is worth it. Um, you know, this is going to be a really interesting game, two really top players. Uh, and it's such a, if Adam wins, he's, you know, he's really got a good chance of making the last two. I guess the route for Kate is, uh, if Adam Logan wins and Lewis Mackay wins, then we're in with a, a really close last round, but. Let's see what, what we get to after this game. Yeah, Lewis has snuck into sixth place and has a chance to play major spoiler in this tournament. His odds are still alive, but a win over David Eldar would make things very, very interesting. Aha comes down for Adam Logan. G-N-O-O-S-S-U, the poll for Wellington. And he will now have to figure out what he wants to do. Cashing the S, one of the two, looks to be a good option for him. But how does he choose to do so? O-U-S? G-O-O-S, uh, both of those reasonable plays, uh, making Z-E-K-S. Are you seeing anything else here, James? No, I can, and I, I think uh, playing O-U-S and Zex, just, you know, you're opening up that double-double lane. That feels a little bit too, too much of a dangerous play this early in the game. He could just play U-S, uh, <laughs> not put the, the O on top. That's an option. Uh, if he doesn't like keeping the duplicated O's, he could just play uh, OS, keeping O-U-N-G-S. Um, but I think he, he, he'll play one of his S's and score a few points. And uh, he could go under Z-A as well with Zag. So uh, it looks like he's got N-O-G-S lined up. That's, an, that's another solid option. I think I like U-S the best or O-S the best. Keep the board a little bit tighter. OUS with a number of front hooks, F, L, M, N, S, and Y all go in front of that word. Um, all of those could be uh, could lead to devastating double doubles. Uh, but after a play like uh, Aha, what kind of inference can you make? The fact that Adam took over a minute to make that play too, perhaps he wasn't too thrilled with it, right? Yeah, I don't think there is too much inference other than he probably has more vowels, but I don't think there's too much you can you can infer from from that one play. And it looks like he is playing under ZA. So Nog's going to be the play underneath. Uh, this will set up his second S in another way. Uh, so that's nice. Nog's, of course, going to be the setup there and also allow for underlaps. Well, but he has picked it up. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe he didn't like leaving the. I'm not sure what what he why he changed his mind there. 
think that's actually bad for Adam because he would have liked to play underneath uh, that play, but never mind. Uh, he's still got the word Kog or Cog, C O G U E. I, again, no idea how to pronounce it. Kog rhymes with brogue, maybe. Um, Perhaps. Yeah. Uh, the chat would be thrilled if Adam in this situation drops down egg for 10 points through the G. Now, that would be a terrible play, uh, mathematically speaking. But I don't think Adam Logan is a avid Twitch watcher and knows the, the inside jokes on Twitch. So I, I'm probably not going through his mind to do content right now. I don't know. Adam seems like a do it for the content kind of guy. <laughs> Just kidding. Absolutely not. C O G U E looks to be a clear best play for him here. C O G and Zag, another option he could consider here, but I think you've got to play the five. And I yeah. agree. E N N S T U Y, the pull for Wellington. He will have options to shed that awful U Y combo. G U N N Y appears to be the hands down favorite play from the computer. Uh, from the G, 26 points, the nice EST leave. If he wants to play tight, Nutsy plays very nicely along the right side of Kog with four overlaps, O-N-G-U-G-U-T and O-E-S for 31. But I think in this situation, you're looking to play Gunny, perhaps also Zany. If you really want to sell out for a bingo, Z-A-N-Y for 16 holds E-N-S-T-U. Yeah, I think Gunny is the, the very standard play. Um, that was the one that that comes to mind immediately. I actually think Adam has a bingo through the O right now. Coho bait. But it's going to get blocked, is it? Yeah, oh, my goodness. Coho bait. Yeah, it's blocked. Well, we said Adam, not a fan of content, but this is going to give a fun content opportunity. C-H-A-Y-O-T-E is 45 points and ends one space short of a triple word square. Will mm. he play that or will he keep things tighter with obey or bench? I like, mm, I don't think I'm playing Chayote. That seems too crazy. C-H-A-T is a great leave, so obey is, uh, is, a, is a fair play. In bench, bench seems pretty reasonable too, scoring the points. Um, the leaves not fantastic ATO, but 40 points for bench. And Chayote is 45, Obey 27, bench 40, and perhaps T-O-B-Y, another consideration to the Y. Could play Yacht, um, leaving O-B-E. Could play Yacht, holding O-B-E. That's 39, also a nice way to score. Yeah, I actually quite like Yacht. Uh, maybe the leave again, OBE isn't fantastic, but uh, when, when, when I've had bingos blocked like this that I see and then I get blocked, I have that little sad moment. But I think as, as Scrabble players, you have to kind of just turn the page, don't you? And say, well, pretend that wasn't there. I have to find the best play now. No, I personally throw a ten temper tantrum and stomp my feet on the ground until I get the feelings out. That's my big tell. If I stamp my feet repeatedly, you block my bingo. Yeah, why did you have to do that? <laughs> uh, all right. So, Adam, I think probably obey the play here. But this is a tough decision and one I expect him to spend some time on. Yeah, I actually, I'm still quite partial to Yacht. Um, certainly not Chayote, even though it's a great word. It's kind of nice, letters, aren't they? CH with the with the, the vowels he has. It's, it, it's, it's one of these terms where there's actually quite a lot of different words he could play. Yeah, lots of good options that all have different drawbacks for different reasons. Some they don't score enough, some they don't leave well enough, some they string a dangerous S-hook one, one short of a triple word score. Uh, lots of decent options, but no great ones. Obey, Bench, Toby, Yacht, they've all got different kinds of merit, maybe even achy. Yeah, the thing with Obey is I think it's, what, 12 or 13 points fewer than, than Bench and Yacht. I think that's too many points to give up at this stage. Uh, I think you have to play one of the highest scoring plays. Um, but, you know, Adam, 
is a, a much smarter person than I am. So I'm just, he's playing a bit. Uh, he's playing achy. Nice spot, Matt. So he's opting to score points now. 36, the BEOT leave, uh, one that could go a couple of different directions for him depending on the pull. But 39, not a score you can sneeze at this turn. He's taking the points. Excuse me, 36 points for Aki. And he'll keep things nice and tight on this board as well. A-A-B-E-S-T-T -T is Wellington's rack. And he will not be able to bingo. Uh, the natural feeling here may be to just play off the two tiles, A-T, in some spot uh but that is not high scoring at all and we haven't seen wellington make plays like that all too often this tournament if you do want to play at maybe kat and ta maybe taha and ta i don't know those give back a lot but uh where else would you do this and what else could you look to do out of this rack yeah the, there isn't really another play that makes any sense is, is he going to play ah uh? i think he's going to play anti or no d-a-n-t looks okay. like that's only 10 points. I mean, all of these scores are lower points. It keeps S A T E S. That's a fair enough leave. Um, I guess he just doesn't want to open an easy little lane for Adam, but um, possibly one of those turns where it, none of this really is that big of a difference between all the different candidate plays. I actually, uh, in a game against Russell Honeybun, I once... Uh, chickened out of Dent for the win and, and settled for a tie. So I have a kind of negative feelings towards the word Dent. And yet that's a mistake you make once and you'll never yeah. forget the word again. You'll even have a, to a story to tell on stream. Yeah, well, I just, it's triggered the memory as soon as I saw it. It's Adam now in a tie game, B-E-O-R-T-T-V. What is Wellington pulled? A-D-E. Okay, so that is not maybe the pull he was looking for, A-A-D-E-E-S-T, after the fish, and he's likely stuck doing so again. This is a tricky turn. I quite like um, bot and cab, because bot, take, well, bot takes a lot of hooks, of which he has two of them, the T and the E. Um, but what do you infer after Dent? You probably infer that that Wellington's sitting on a fairly decent rack, so opening up some bingo lanes might not be the thing you want to do given your own rack. Yeah, that KAB hook going to be very pivotal behind it, and you don't have that S. Uh, I'm, I have Wellington pegged on, a, or pegged on an S more often than not after these last few plays, if I had to guess, and yet where else could you play those tiles and score some points? T-O? in the top right part of this board, making TA and Doc scoring 18. That feels abysmal, B-E-R-T-V, a terrible leave. You can but score with B-O and Doc in the top right, leaving the board as it is, but your leave is disgusting. Behove playing through the E-H is like an option, I guess, but that feels awful as well. I think you're sort of forced to make a B-O-T or B-O-T-T -T play just because you don't have other options here. Yeah, I... Yeah, I think that the dent play of Wellington is is obviously, you know, unless he's literally got double D, double A, double T, and that's why he played it. Um, you have to infer a strong leave. Looks like he's lining up bot with the double T. Um, that takes a, a that takes a back E, as well as a S and a Y. So uh, he he's setting himself up for his own E. Yes, he is. And he'll float AT out there for a potential bingo. But Wellington uh, pulling two more vowels into this rack uh, doesn't seem to be in the cards for him again here. Now he's forced to decide how many tiles he wants to play again. Uh, perhaps DAE beneath bot makes some sense. Or maybe he looks to keep the cab's hook open as he has that S and it's a good line for him. Maybe just AE beneath bot. Maybe a longer play. We've seen him consistently play fairly long out of these situations. Well, he was -E. playing uh, ATES last turn, didn't he? So maybe he keeps ATES again with, with the DAE. The D again, no idea how to pronounce words. But he's, uh, he's playing short up in the top right. Yeah, this I think is the correct play for Wellington. I like it. Don't open up additional opportunities. The board is shaped to advantage your rack with the back hook to BOTT and with the two different lines to, to play a bingo ending in S. 
I like this play. Don't give back more than you need to from Wellington. Yeah. E I N O R B Y. Yeah, you're right, Matt. Most draws are going to work out here for Wellington. We'll see what he pulls. I saw an I and a P, so that that seems like it'll be fairly promising. E I N O R V Y for Adam Logan. Vaney and B O T T E looks naturally the play to me. I don't think there's anything even close to this option on this turn. Yeah, Vaney will give D paints back, but you know, obviously, uh, Adam is not knowing that. Vaney just seems the, the natural play. Yeah, I just can't see Adam doing anything else. You'd like to look for more defensive options, play through the T instead of taking the back hook to be OTT, uh, and yet there's not a great play that allows him to do that. Voter just doesn't make enough sense here. You can't play the V and the Y together in that spot unless you want to play make a play like Tyvee here, and that just seems like too big a sacrifice. Yeah, he could play Viney, making Botti, but you, then you stick the I right in front of that double letter score going to the triple. Um, but that keeps the board some, but then, then your opponent bingo is with an S and you've got nowhere to put anything. So, well, there'll be some floaters, but you, you lose that extra line. So, um, I think maybe 37 points are too many points to, to give up. Yeah. Envoy also plays in that spot, but it's 29 instead of 37. And it sets up a big S hook on a board that already has that opportunity. And you still don't have one as Adam Vaney has to be the play here. It's going to get a hit back by deep paints, but Adam can't know that, and Vaney just so much stronger than his other options. Yeah, anything like Ivy, Tyvee, Viney, that, that, that putting that I in that place is, is uh, too dangerous. Um, doesn't seem thrilled with his options. We've seen Adam retain EIRV before for the synergy between those tiles. Maybe he considers just playing off a Y and an O in this situation. I think maybe he would have done that last turn had the spot not been taken away. Yo and Doc would have been a nice option for him. But with that taken away, I think you've just got to play Vaney here. Yeah. Um I'm trying to find ways to convince myself that playing to Botti is the correct play, but I think that that's just because I know what Wellington's rec is. I think if I'm if I'm Adam in this position, I I probably play Vaney and don't think too much about it. I'm surprised we've seen him take this long on this turn. He feels this is a pivotal moment in the game as well, but you know you can't know what Wellington has. Vaney doesn't seem to open you know other lines the end perhaps a floater, but it doesn't take a back S or a back D or anything else. So uh, I don't know. Well, he's just seen his opponent play five tiles over the last two turns with D, A, T, and A, E played off. So he knows that that two tile pull, pull very likely led to a, a strong, strong bingo prone wreck. Uh, maybe he just doesn't want to add another floater, some floaters out there. But if he doesn't address the, the, the back hook to bot, then even if Wellington didn't have an S bingo, he's likely to bingo down that lane. So I, th I think, think you're playing off BOTT in some way. <laughs> I mean, I guess YO under bot is the only other play worth considering. Maybe so. T-I-V-Y from either team makes just a little bit of sense, but I don't know. To me, Vaney has been the standout play for several minutes. Yeah, this is this is a much longer think than I than I was expecting, but um, it is a pretty important part of the game. Vaney will give back the D paints bingo, but holds okay tiles for Adam. He'll be able to hit the S back. The game will still be wide open after that. Yeah, D paints is not a huge scoring bingo. I mean, again, Adam doesn't know any of this. But uh, yeah, he certainly looks like he's doing some math or at the doubt it's tracking. He's certainly writing some things down. Okay, he's playing Tyvee from the T. Wow. That's a very interesting play. Wow. Perhaps he feels if Wellington doesn't have an S or missed the bingo, this his yeah. best option here. It also addresses the back hooks to B-O-T-T -T very nicely. So Tyvee. Yeah. 
His spider senses were were at full strength right there. And they paid off dividends for him. Wellington, A-D-E-I-P-S-T. Perhaps we see paid through the I and Tybee for 22 E-I-S-T. A nice stable leave. A one-tile fish, Z-A-P, could be rather strong here as well. Strengthen your S, set nearly an unblockable setup. Well, no, A-H-A has so many front hooks in NCSW, so that doesn't look like a good option here. DAP and a zap may be another option, but I don't like the way that destroys my S hooks if I'm Wellington. Yeah, this is, a, again, I, this is what, the fifth or sixth turn in a row that's been somewhat quite tricky. None, none of these, you know, one, two obvious plays. Uh, this, is, this is a very thoughtful game. Uh, these are some of the hardest racks in Scrabble, and we've seen them consistently. Where I'm, you got good intermediate tiles and good options, but no great plays. The the terrible racks and the amazing racks are so easy. Just play the bingo or play the val dump is so easy without thinking. But these these are the turns that separate the grandmasters from the rest, and they're so challenging. Oh yeah, most of us can plunk down obvious obvious words when they when they hit us in the face, but this is a t very tactical game. What do you think of PYA? I was looking at that. That an interesting option. PYA for 16 points through the Y and Tyvee. Yeah. My concern is I'll bingo with my S somewhere. And then Adam likely to beat me to the next S. He'll get the other spot. Kind of splits the difference here. Well, PYA also takes a T at the end for Payat. Huh. I think that's a little bird. I'm not entirely sure. But he's playing from Zap. He'll fish into AEST one more time, it looks like here. Yeah, well, I mean, one time it's got to work out. Eventually, I will get a bingo. Thanks, Wellington. He's been unlucky with his calls. He's hit the clock, dip the play, and Adam D E F I N O R here. Again, naturally, the thought probably block the line that was just created and play off your two worst tiles, the O and the F. Yeah. O F beneath dip does all of that at once. So uh, I feel really good about that. I would have already played it in this situation, but Adam maybe going to also consider F O I D through the I in Tyvee, uh, which does take a back S as well. Yeah, off seems the most natural play. And I think if he does play that, Wellington does not have a place for his bingo. Wellington has finally hit into the AEST leave. He's pulled a sweater. But yes, no spot for that that I see. No eights as well. Sweater, of course, something these players are not going to need. This tournament from Las Vegas, Nevada. It is swelteringly hot in the summer in Nevada. Uh, about 115 Fahrenheit or roughly 47 or so Celsius. Uh, so killer weather, killer altitude, killer dryness on top of an absolute brain drain for these players. Looks like he's W. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he's playing, he's playing D O F, not just O F. So D O F to play, scoring a little bit more E I N R the leave. The W is going to play very nicely, although Wellington won't bingo. A new uh, plays a top uh, at the top of the board E or W E and a new to score twenty eight, and that looks so natural to me here. I would yeah. have already played that one as well. It's a mini board vision test. Can you can you see the hook? Uh, it looks like. Well, I thought he was pulling up W E there, but it's a little bit of a test of board vision. Uh, Adam has drawn a bingo. We'll worry about that in a moment. Yeah, I think that's the obvious play, Matt, a new and we. Yeah, I would have, I would have made this play. Uh, he could play W under, do, under DOF. Could perhaps consider that. I'm just afraid, you know, the down plays, the doubt plays, the dows plays that I'd be giving up there. Doff hard to underlap right now. And if I'm holding A-E-R-S-T, I look at Adam Logan and I say, you play a four ending in a vowel underneath the D and Doff, and I will triple, triple on you or hit a bingo underneath. I'm playing W-E and a new all day, and I think Wellington's about due as well. Yeah, if he plays, if he plays it, I don't think Adam's bingo plays. Correct. Yeah. So this is a this is an interesting game where we have we have these bingo prone racks, but everybody's uh, just missing. 
Yeah, one of them bound to hit, and I'm sure as soon as one hits, the other will hit right back with the availability of the floaters that go out on the board. WE comes down. Wellington trails by one. Adam Logan to play out of E-E-I-L-N-R-S. Neither blank has been drawn this game. Uh, we could have a big explosion of points after what's been a stare down for the first part of this game. Or we could just go 20 moves of people playing two, three tiles at a time. Yeah, Adam's just going to play E-L underneath D-O-F, and we're just going to sit here and watch players dink two tiles, three tiles at a time for the rest of this game and miss bingos. <laughs> it will, the, the, the dam will break at some point, but um, I, I have not generated a good candidate move yet for Adam. Yeah, I mean, E-L underneath DOF is so bad, and yet I, I don't know what else you do with racks like this. They're so tough. That just feels far too easy for a, for a bingo to place underneath. You know, DOF makes too many fours. Um, but, but yeah, where else? Adam likely going through the same questions we're going through. Maybe he'll play E-E-L from the E above the triple for nine. Yeah, I don't really like that either because, the, I mean, that, that kind of opens a lot. But the, the thing is, you're sitting on a bingo prone rep too. So it's this balance, isn't it, between need to be a little bit open, but not too open because Wellington's sitting on a bingo prone leave too. If you don't want to get bingoed on, perhaps ELS underneath DOF the move. That's going to inhibit uh, Wellington's chances of bingoing significantly next turn. Yeah, that's an interesting... I mean, the, is the S really that valuable right now? Not particularly, but in any passing move, it could be a lot more so. Exactly. If I'm going to make that play, I play it you know, 30 seconds ago and fake like I've drawn an additional S. Yeah, I think maybe EL under DOF and, and hope. But I, I feel too often in Scrabble, when I'm playing Scrabble, I play moves and hope. I think usually you want to do a bit more than that. I'm running a simulation. I've specified the leave A-E-R-S-T for Wellington. Of course, Adam can't know it's exactly that, but has to imagine it's similar to that. After E-L, Wellington bingos 77% of the time next turn. After E-L-S, that drops to 24%. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm not really that worried about Adam's time just yet. And, you know, he's a, he, he could play Blitz if he has to. Um, but I, this is worth taking the time. You don't want to make a mistake. Perhaps we see L-Y-E through the Y in Tyvee, but I think at this point you've got to have Wellington pegged on an S after the way he's played two or three tiles each of the last several turns. Yeah. I think, I think Adam's made correct decisions thus far, so I'm expecting him to make another one. Is he thinking of playing rinse? Do you think that's what he's thinking about doing? No, I think he's thinking about holding rinse. Yeah. Adam, no stranger to playing fast. He used to have a reputation for playing Scrabble extremely fast, has slowed down as he's matured as a player, but can do the calculations and the analytics very quickly. As we've mentioned before, he's a PhD in some kind of higher mathematics. A uh, very, very intelligent man. I believe he was a professor of mathematics for some time, was he not? I think he still is, or some kind of math researcher as well. L-Y-E, the play he's elected to make, holding rents, setting up that S, and he will miss a bingo from Wellington. He's got to be holding his breath, but Wellington would have played it already. Oh, I'm sorry. No, a wearist is valid in CSW. That's going to play for a ton. Yeah, he has a wearist. That'll be 81 for Wellington, and Adam has pulled very well himself. A-E-G-I-N-R-S, the rack for him. Yeah, and he'd have, he'll have Syringa. Syringa in reply under his L that he just placed, if, if that is what Wellington does. Well, yeah. There's, a, there's quite a few anagrams of, of that rack of Adam's. It doesn't look like Wellington has seen it, though. I don't want to put the hex on, but yeah, I, I mean, this is a play you make right away if you see it. Again, he's not really a shuffler per se, is he? He, he lines up words he sees. He's doing a little bit more movement of the tiles. 
He's got the W-A-R. So you going to see it? Sometimes you get so fixated on the leave that you don't think about the bingo, but awareest, a word certainly Wellington knows and has played likely multiple times in his career before. Yeah, he, this is a word that he clearly could anagram, you know, just sitting at home doing some word study. You would see it in, if he if he knew there was a seven in there, you'd see it in one second. It looks oh like my he goodness. Oh my goodness, is he going to miss it? He's thinking about putting that W out in. This is going to give a nine time, uh, Matt. This is this will be a oh nine. Oh my time. goodness! Resawing to come down. Oh my goodness! Is he hit the clock? Oh, oh my goodness. goodness! Okay, so Adam, over to you. Can you find? He sees it immediately. Yeah. No. No time at all to think about this one. Oh my goodness! The bingo miss from Wellington. Wow. The double or triple triple by Adam Logan. What a huge sequence here. Resawing for 158 puts Adam Logan commandingly ahead. Still both blanks in this game. This is not over yet, but I can't believe what I've just seen. Well, I can believe that Adam saw it in, in, in fractions of a second. I mean, you saw it just as quickly, James. Yeah, well, no, I don't think as quickly as Adam. <laughs> But um, Wellington's pulled the blank, and we, we're still, we're st we still have it. The scores are not correct, obviously, after that last play. But, you know, Wellington just needs to stay composed. There's, there's, there's still a game on here. Scrabble, so hard to play so consistently for so long. We've seen very uncharacteristic play. Will Anderson mistracking and blowing a game this morning. David Eldar missing two bingos last game. And Wellington whiffing on a list bingo, uh, awarest last round it is so hard to play scrabble at the high level for so long especially uh with two back-to-back -back tournaments like we've seen here but i am absolutely shocked by the caliber of play that's come down on board one today i mean throughout the tournament the first few days we were seeing you know close to perfect games so th this has to be fatigue and the stress of, and the, of the situation there's nothing else that could even possibly be contributed to. These are the best Scrabble players in the world, and they are making rookie mistakes. But we've seen all of these players play so, so well. The brain drain is real. It's a, Again, Matt, Scrabble is very, very hard. That it is. Yeah. I mean, I've played a lot of sport in my life, soccer and cricket. And, well, golf is not that energetic, but there's nothing as tiring as playing Scrabble. <laughs> Mame the play for Wellington, BRQ blank the leave. There are still two U's unseen to Wellington. He'll go looking for one there or perhaps the second blank. Adam, E-I-N-R-R-R-T. And I think the play here might be a little crazy, but just G-R-R. -R. It looks like he's just... Trier here. He's going to play long. He's going to go digging for a blank. He's going to score 18 points. I like this as well. Put the pressure on. Try to rush to the end of the game. Try to find that blank. Yeah, I like that play. That's a very nice play. And he's also obviously a bit uh, cognizant of his own time situation. So that just, just makes sense. Get rid of those R's. Get to the blanks if you can. Get to the end of the game faster if you can. Now, Wellington likely to shed the queue here, though he'll have to think about how he wants to do that. We'll display the unseen pool. 28 in the, or unseen, 21 in the bag. QI playing beneath LYE. QI also playing here, either with CID or IDANT for 27. The higher scoring option, six more, but with four unseen eyes. Wellington can't do that, and he opts to play up top. BDRS, his leave. He's going to go looking for a vowel or a blank to have a good play next turn. And Adam, A-E-L-N-O-O-R. 
He will have good scoring opportunities here. Uh, the nice spot, Allo alongside Etrier making Maimer as well. But it looks like he's just going to opt to play significantly more tiles. Once again, Iron coming down 25 points. ALO the leave. Adam with the case A on his rack can feel pretty good. Only one O as well. This leave actually looks fairly solid for him. Iron the play 25 and Wellington B-D-E-I-R-S blank on his rack. He looks to bingo here. He'll have numerous ways to do so, or perhaps he could consider foregoing it. He has a high scoring play of BEDS between Etrier and Mame, uh, making Mamer for 40 points, holding IR blank. He's got other bingos available uh, Seabird and Disrobe, playing beneath Adam's previous play. For 76 is Disrobe, 74 is Seabird, or he can look to play on the right side of resawing Disrobe in that spot. 70 points other bingos such as derbies and darbies for 69. yeah and wellington has to feel i bingo now i catch adam with a bad rack i get the next blank i bingo i could be back in this but the bad news for wellington is that adam has already lined up a seven that is almost never going to be blocked sorry an eight letter word that is never going to be blocked that would be talionic to the C at the top of the board. Two compelling bingo lines on this board down at the bottom and to the right side of resawing. And Adam hits the one that is nearly impossible to hit a bingo to. So Wellington to bingo, Adam to bingo back. Or perhaps Wellington passes the bingo. But in either case, it is very, very tough uh, in this situation for the Nigerian to win this game after the draw from Adam. Yeah, this is probably... a. Uh the end but you know wellington finds his seven i'm also now matt looking at body language between lewis and david eldar in the very very far corner of the ballroom we're just going to have to wait to see what happens in that game oh yeah that is uh that is small and back there but maybe chat can get some uh predictions about what's happening disrobe the 70 point bingo is what uh uh wellington is looking at and Adam likely going to waste no time hitting him back with the bingo of his own. Talionic or perhaps Dilation from the D also available, though Talionic scores three more. Adam's going to look at the unseen pool before deciding on these bingos. As after the bingo, uh, Adam looking at eight tiles in the bag. Well, um, I, I, I think we briefly talked about it in the kind of the, the break that Adam and David Eldar both have a tie and spread may be relevant. So Adam has to make good decisions related to spread. Both of these bingos leave an O underneath that triple word score with the J unseen. Um, so I think Adam is probably just going to have a little think about, you know, because when Talionic was his only play, he would have probably just played that most likely. But now he sees another option. Um, the yeah. exit I've seen also to, to Adam's perspective. So he understands dilation or talionic. He gets hit back by a big play, but will he be able to hold on? If he draws very poorly into this bag, gets hit by a big J play, and then Wellington able to retain the X to hit alongside disrobe, perhaps he could have trouble. I don't think anybody here would consider not bingoing with talion to the right side of disrobe for 32, would they? No, I... I think, is there an X play that hits the double letter score through an O? I think that's what we... F-O-L-X, I believe you guys have that one in this lexicon. Is that correct? No. No. F-L-O-X only. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, using the blank, there's, there's things like do, D-O-U-X. Um, what else could there be that, that could cause serious problems? I mean, most likely is... Uh, you know, a J play going across from that. Um, he's got, you know, J, J O, is that still feasible to, to his? Yeah, that would still be feasible. Um, I don't think there's a world he doesn't play the bingo, but he's just making, he's having a little look to see what, what problems might be around the corner. So he shrugs his shoulders and plays it. I think that's what you have to do here. And even if you do get hit back, just avoid the nightmare, nightmare draw. This is going to be good for Logan as Wellington has not picked up the J and has not picked up the blank. E-L-N-P-U-U-X, the pull for Wellington. And he will have Plex above Talionic for 60 points. But N-U-U, the leave there with just one tile in the bag, it's likely not going to be enough for Wellington, even if the blank is left in the bag on Adam's seven tile pole. Blank and there it is. First one out the bag. 
So this is Adam's game. Does the J come out? Nope. The J is in the bag. The J has been left in the bag. Wow. I think he has to play. Well, the problem with Plex, though, man, is you leave double, not a W, but two U's. And yeah. No okay. coming back from that. If there were a second J spot, perhaps you forego the play above Talionic now, cash the X alongside Disrobe, and look to come back with the J. Pray that you draw it, but there's not two options. I think Wellington forced to just play Plex here and lose the game. I wonder if there's a way he wins if the blank is in the bag. I don't think so. I no. think he's too far behind. Yeah. And Adam's actually going to bingo out here. Oh, let's have – is he? Let's have a look. He sees it. Yep. Frivolous. No. That spread could be huge as frivoler or frivoled to come down. That's going to be 76 points. Catch Wellington with the J, and all of a sudden, 529 to 376, the final in this one absolutely wild as Wellington misses a bingo and opens up a triple triple instead. Adam Logan staying alive in this tournament. Well, notably I'm, uh, I made a mistake there. I was thinking he was playing ES, but it's only ED and frivol with no E and the S is, is an exceptional word. So, you know, Adam 101% convinced in his word knowledge right there plays it immediately. Yeah, frijoles with a J, uh, the six to the eight from Spanish, but frivol has to be E-R or E-D. Great game by Adam. That was really interesting how that was so tactical in the, the first third of the game. And then one big mistake by Wellington just got punished. Just one big mistake got punished as hard as it possibly could have been punished. We are going to cut over to the scoreboard. Oh, hang on. Are they are they talking? Some banter? Let's see if we can catch something. Seringo, but stop. Seringo, but stop. But our words will have the. Okay, okay. 5, 3, 1, 3, 7, 6. What do, what do you have? Uh, okay. So we have, have 531376 at the end. Wellington made aware right away that he is missed awarest. He laughs and sighs and submits the score in this one. That's got to be a killer. He's realized the mistake he's made. We are going to switch over to the live scoreboard and watch these results come in.